Hello, welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Brevard, North Carolina. It's Monday, so I'm at my house and I am slowly about to start getting back into the videos I've been doing online, um, like the ranunculus and the pressed flowers and all the great things that you know me for. Um, slowly easing back in and I've been doing a lot of online virtual seminars, like lecture series and stuff, which have taken up a lot of my time lately outside of running the shop. But today I just wanted to ease back in with a little bit, uh, going back to my, my series on life lessons from Knit and Crochet. Haven't filmed for that in a long time, right? Lately, a couple of things have come up that have really coalesced for me in terms of things that we can take from knit and crochet and apply to life. And it was both having my assistant and myself sometimes have to deal with tangles of yarn. And also I'm teaching, and this is attached to my sock stuff here, this happening when you knit or crochet. I'm teaching my sock class now and also teaching other classes. I have to talk about the tools and the yarn and how they interact. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to call this one, but it really is um, both. It's finding the balance between letting go and going with the yarn instead of fighting it but also knowing when to show the tools and the yarn who's boss. And what I mean by the second, I'll start with that, is not necessarily forcing things. <laughs> it's, it's been when I am teaching people how to knit on two circulars or deal with double points, you start to knit here and then this needle wants to get up in your face and it's like you show them who's in control. You're going to push some of these needles down and you're going to show them who is in control, that it is you and not your tools or the yarn. However, that doesn't mean that you're going to fight and pull and tangle. When something like this happens, we like to say, or like when your, your stitches fall off your needle or your, your hook. Hook is not as big a deal. It's easier to recover from. We like to say, scream and yell, get the energy out. Just don't pull on anything. Because this, if I pull gently, if I don't yank and pull on the tangles, if I try to understand the yarn, instead of forcing myself on it, I might start to see that there's loops, there's things I can pull gently and work with and get this tangle out. Liz at the shop has been untangling some yarn that fell off the swift and maybe got the person got a little frustrated. See, I just pulled that out and shook it a little bit because ah, 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 life gets like that sometimes, right? Where you just want to go ah and shake it and be done with it. And oftentimes that kind of reaction does not lead to this, to life going easier. However, keeping things bottled up inside doesn't either. So it's really going with the flow. I was talking with my um, virtual sit and stitch group this Sunday about Taoism. And this is not, this is my own interpretation of Taoism. This is not, I am not a Taoist who can teach you the proper things, but there's a story of a butcher who's never had to sharpen his knife. And when a student goes to him and says, how is this possible? Is your knife magic? He says, no, he says, I work with the grooves and the spaces and I have learned where the grooves and the spaces are. I feel for them in the meat that I'm cutting. I don't try to hack through the bone. So he, and as I'm sitting here, I'm just like, mm -hmm. so he doesn't fight it. He doesn't pull on this. And like for a knitter, that would be the equivalent of not pulling on this until it becomes a knot, trying to figure out and become one with the yarn. If we were taking a more Buddhist approach we, or a, a Quaker approach or something, we might call it being mindful. 
being mindful and, and not pulling too tight on anything and learning to work with what you've been given. However, there are times when your tools of the yarn are being frustrating and going where they're not supposed to, and then you need to stay in control. And I see all of this happening in life. I see all of this as ways to deal with life. And again, I am not working with this yarn to magically show you how it untangles because there's a really good chance this is going to take longer than just the few minutes that I'm filming. But I am going to work on it while I talk to you all. So one of the reasons that I'm not afraid to pull out my work and get it back on the needles is I work with the yarn. I don't try to panic and force the yarn to do things it doesn't want to do but I also retain my control. I also look at it going, this, this is not the boss of me. <laughs> you know, this is not going to be the end of me. And sometimes that's what we need to do in complicated situations in life. Like here is a longer strand that if I follow it, take all the metaphors from this that you can. If I follow this, I might find the magic to untying one of these knots or to have fewer knots in this. But when I get closer to the problem, that is when I usually need to relax even more, even more, instead of getting anxious and balled up and tense. The closer you get to the crazy issue, and, and this doesn't always work, like I said, I might not be able to untangle this whole thing, but the closer you get to a crazy issue sometimes, the more you have to let go. But at the same time, again, when the needles are all up in your face and they're the, not the ones you're dealing with, sometimes you have to say, no, I'm in control here. But that can be a calm thing instead of a reactive explosive thing. It's no, I am the one who is in charge. And yes, you are a problem <laughs> as I'm talking to my yarn. But we will work together and we will figure this out. So believe it or not, and this, I don't know how much this is potentially a life lesson. Sometimes it's not the yarn. Sometimes it's a piece of hair that got in there and got tangled around the yarn. Sometimes what looks like the problem is not the problem. So this is actually a lot less than it was. Like I said, I don't think I can sit here and untangle all this. But they might sound like contradictory things, but I really see them side by side. I see letting go and having calm being the way that you untangle knots, the way that you can perhaps get a new perspective on the hot mess that is life. Part of this is I have another ball of yarn off the end here that I'm trying to untangle and I was trying to undo. This was the middle of the ball and, the, and also the outside. And this is creating its own issue. And it takes time. It takes time to piece these things out. And sometimes it takes focus and concentration and patience. How many of us can say that about things that happen in life? This guy. Some of this, I might have to take one of my socks like this one and work his way through. I might have to find an end to the problem and see if it may not be just pulling on the knot that undoes it. But sometimes it's remembering that as complicated as this may seem, it sticks and string, as Liz would say, it's all sticks and string. And in the end, we can figure it out. Sometimes the answer might be just cutting the yarn. Sometimes the answer is to gently take what was tight and try to ease it apart. 
because the more we untangle this, the more it might make sense. And sometimes we need help with that. I can sit here because I have practiced at this and potentially get this more untangled than someone else. For me, the equivalent in real life, sometimes that's therapy. I'm in therapy. I think it has done me such a world of good understanding this by myself, what this could represent in my life by myself. Sometimes you need help to see that. Our knitter brought in her yarn for Liz to help untangle. So sometimes you can't do it on your own and that's okay too. But sometimes if that's the only option, sitting down, taking your time, breathing. We say breathing and hydration. It's not the answer to everything, but it's good stuff to keep in mind. Sometimes that is the main thing. So I leave you with, have the confidence to say you are in control but not to the level of trying to force your will. Saying that you are in charge is not the same as dominating your crafting. Being able to adapt, being able to say, oh, you know, I think there's something else going on here can be really, really important. Seeking help from people when it gets tough. You don't have to do it by yourself. <laughs> I wish I could just sit here and untangle this and show you a miracle, but this is actually better than it was. And I'm gonna take my own advice. And I'm going to gently ease this apart and look at it in more detail and not overreact. Before I sign off, I want to be, I want to clarify. An overreaction has a sense of judgment to it. Well, however you react is how you react. I'm just going to try not to pull my knots tight. Emotions are going to be what they're going to be. I used to say when, um, when your needles fall out of your work, don't scream and yell and don't pull anything, meaning like freeze and you can figure it out. And now I say, scream and yell as loud as you need to. Just don't try not to pull on anything because that will make the problem worse. Scream and yell as loud as you need to. Take some deep breaths when tangles happen. And eventually, it will be okay. I've gotten a lot of this out. I haven't gotten all of it. I'll try to put it in a picture at the end <laughs> if I'm able to untangle it all. I'll take a where I am now and where I'd like to be. And if I remember how long it took me to get there. You are in control even if you have to give up some of that control. You can be in charge without being in control. Go with the flow, don't fight the knots, and eventually you can make sense of things. Even that little bit just got better. I hope to make some corner to corner crochet videos coming up and until then, may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. Keep it loose, be in charge, and enjoy the ride. We'll see you next time.